He explored and documented Eastern Equatorial Africa that he contributed to the journals of various learned societies, including the Botany of the Speak and Grant Expedition. He was known as Lieutenant Colonel James Augustus Grant. After his return to England in 1858, James Augustus Grant was eager to embark on another African expedition. In 1860, he joined forces with John Hanning Speak on a historic journey to solve the mystery of the Nile sources. The expedition began in October 1860, departing from Zanzibar, and their ultimate goal was to reach Gondokoro. Grant played a vital role throughout the expedition, conducting independent investigations and making valuable botanical collections along the way. Despite Speak being the leader, Grant remained loyal and dedicated to their common cause. The journey was arduous and fraught with challenges. Traversing treacherous terrains, enduring extreme weather conditions, and facing the constant threat of diseases and hostile encounters with native tribes tested their resolve. However, Grant and Speak pressed on, fueled by their shared determination to uncover the secrets of the Nile. Finally, in February 1863, after more than two years of perseverance and exploration, the expedition arrived at Gondokoro. This marked a significant milestone, as it brought them back into contact with what they considered to be civilization. Grant's contributions, alongside Speaks, provided a comprehensive account of their remarkable journey, shedding light not only on the geographical aspects but also on the lives and customs of the native inhabitants. In 1864, as a supplement to Speaks' narrative, Grant published his own book titled, A Walk Across Africa. This work delved into the everyday lives and pursuits of the natives they encountered, as well as the economic potential of the lands they traversed. Grant's insights and observations provided a valuable perspective on the regions they explored, further enhancing the significance of their expedition. Recognition for their accomplishments soon followed. In the same year, Grant was bestowed with the prestigious Patron's Medal of the Royal Geographical Society. This honor acknowledged his invaluable contributions to the expedition and his commitment to advancing geographical knowledge. Two years later, in 1866, he was awarded the Companionship of the Bath, a recognition of his services during the Nile journey. James Augustus Grant's exploration endeavors continued beyond the Nile expedition. In 1868, he served in the intelligence department of the Abyssinian expedition. His involvement in this military campaign earned him the distinction of becoming a companion of the Order of the Star of India, alongside receiving the Abyssinian War Medal. Following the conclusion of the war, Grant retired from the army, having achieved the rank of lieutenant colonel. Throughout his African expeditions, James Augustus Grant's unwavering dedication, meticulous research, and commitment to documenting the diverse aspects of the regions he explored established him as a respected figure in the field of exploration and geographical understanding. As James Augustus Grant and his companion, John Hanning Speak, reached the native kingdom of Karagi on the western side of Lake Victoria, Grant's health took a turn for the worse. In his book, A Walk Across Africa, Grant vividly describes the debilitating illness that afflicted him during this time. Grant recounts, having had fevers twice a month, in December my usual complaint assumed a new form. The right leg, from above the knee, became deformed with inflammation, and remained for a month in this unaccountable state, giving intense pain. The pain was temporarily relieved by a deep incision, but the ailment persisted. Over the next three months, abscesses formed, requiring multiple incisions and draining. Grant's strength was severely depleted, and the knee became alarmingly bent, rendering him unable to walk. Despite the excruciating pain and the challenges he faced, Grant maintained a positive outlook. He writes, I had great faith, was all along cheerful and happy, except at the crises of this helpless state, when I felt it would have been preferable to be nearer home. The local natives sympathized with his suffering and attempted various cures, including a poultice made of cow dung, salt, and mud from the lake, but to no avail. Desperate for a solution, Grant turned to Dr. Nanaji, the Sultan's brother, who claimed to know the disease perfectly. A gentle peasant of the Wanyambo race and his wife were sent to attend to Grant. The man meticulously examined Grant's leg, making cuts over the skin with a penknife, which were then treated with a black paste. A small piece of lava was tied around Grant's ankle as a charm. Despite these efforts, the cures had no apparent effect. By the fifth month, Grant's condition started to improve, and he was gradually able to leave the confines of his hut and breathe in the sweet air outside. However, due to his weakened state, it seemed unlikely that he could join Speak in Buganda, Uganda. But to Grant's surprise, the King of Karagi sent an officer and 40 men to convey him to Buganda, using a wicker stretcher. The journey was far from comfortable for Grant. The stretcher would be placed on the heads of four Waganda, who would trot off at a rapid pace of six miles an hour, causing great pain and discomfort to Grant's already afflicted leg. The bearers would frequently rest and laugh along the way, 
but the transporting method proved to be a challenge. Grant recalls, one great difficulty was to make them carry the conveyance so that the country in front could be seen in traveling, this they, for some reason, refused to do and persisted in carrying me head first, instead of feet. Eventually, the stretcher was changed from the head to the shoulder of the waganda, giving Grant a slightly improved view of the surroundings. As they traveled, Grant's condition continued to improve, and by the time they reached Buganda, he had regained enough strength to part ways with Speak temporarily. Speak, understanding Grant's still limited mobility, suggested that Grant stay behind while Speak continued his exploration towards Anyoro. Grant reflects on this decision, emphasizing that it was his health alone that prevented him from accompanying Speak further. He clarifies, nothing could be more contrary to the fact. My state of health alone prevented me from accompanying Speak to set at rest for geographers the latitude of the interesting locality, as to which we were perfectly satisfied from native reports. Grant's illness deprived him of witnessing Speak becoming the first white man to see the outpouring of the White Nile from Lake Victoria, momentous event in geographical discoveries. Image illustrations in Grant's book depict him being carried on a wicker stretcher, leaving Karagi, marking the significant impact his illness had on their expedition. If you want to discover more adventurers on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button for my channel, and don't forget to leave a comment in the section below, telling us which adventurers you'd like us to feature next.